Let me share my heart with you a little bit this morning. God has proven his great love to me. Th through the brain tumor that I've had and the cancer, through the pandemic and the virus, through not being able to have church, not being able to hang out with people that are so, so kind to me. Not even being able to give hugs, not be able to shake hands. But, but God has so constantly, he has so consistently told me how much he loves me. And the main point in that teaching that he's given me is how much he wants me to love others to bring joy to others. Not expect or demand that they bring joy to me. We are supposed to love God with everything we have and love others in the same way. With all that we have and all that we are, we're supposed to love people. What I want to promise you is that the Board of Administration is doing everything they can to prove what that love looks like. We're doing all we can to come back together. Your BOA is working hard together. And our plan at this point is to start coming back together on October 4th with a service. But, but we want to talk with you. We want to hear from you. And we want for you to hear the plan that we have for the Sunday AM service. Now, we will continue because there will be people that shouldn't come back to church. And we will have the video available on our website. And we will show it every Sunday. For those of you who choose not to come, we want to make sure you know you have God's rich blessing to make that decision. Many of you making that decision are making the right decision. And we love you deeply. And we care deeply about your health. But when we come back together, please understand, those of you who come in, we will wear masks. We will keep the six-foot issue alive. We will have hand sanitizer available. And we want everybody to take a look at their own health that morning. And if you've got a, 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 a you, if you're not feeling well or you have a temperature issue and stuff like that, don't come to church. Don't take a chance on sharing that with everybody. Keep praying for us, people. Praying that we would hear God because we want to hear him. We want to obey him willingly. Now, another announcement for everybody. Uh, our daily bread, I got a call, uh, a text the other day and somebody wanted to eat the, our daily bread for next month. And it was really a blessing. It was really sweet to hear from them, good to hear from them. And we will bring that to them. If you want one of the Our Daily Breads, please call the church. Call me. Do, do however you want to. But I will be more than glad to bring you your, your, your Our Daily Bread denominate, de devotion. I'm sorry. Having some trouble today. Have mercy on me, okay? The other announcement that we have is we're planning on having communion again on the first Sunday in September. September 6th, I believe, is that day. Please be prepared next Sunday with a liquid and with a bread. Now, the issue about the communion is not as much about what you use for the communion as it is why you take communion. The purpose for communion is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It is your submission to Jesus Christ and your love for Jesus Christ. Focus on your submission. Focus on your love for Jesus Christ. Remember, communion is about your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It is not just a program that we do in the church. Now, the last announcement that I have for you, for, for each of you to hear, God has called Pastor Greg and Emily back to the coast. Uh, we, we announced that last week. They'll be here on staff until October 31st. We want to continue to celebrate God's direction in the lives of Pastor Greg and Emily. 
We're not celebrating the change, okay? <laughs> but we're celebrating the obedience. This is not a bad move. This is God's move for them. There is no negative. There is no problem that has brought this on. We celebrate them. And we celebrate who they have been for us. I have been so, so blessed by having them here and being a part of their life. God's blessing on them still continue. I confess Bowing here I find my rest And without you I fall apart And you're the one That guides my heart And Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you Where sin runs deep your grace is more For grace is found Is where you are And where you are Lord, I am free Holiness Is Christ in me And where you are Lord, I am free
So here we are at Vic and TK's rock farm. If you've ever wondered what Vic means by moving rocks, these are all of their rocks. Pretty incredible and, and really, really beautiful. So look at, we got, looky here. Let's see if I can't not trip over these. There we go. Look at those rocks. We have rocks of all shapes and sizes. Those are big rocks. These are little rocks. And here we have Vic and TK. Oh boy. Hey you guys. Hello. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Good. We're doing good. Good. So what have you been up to in the last two or three months? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've played golf. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Playing some golf. We moved a few of these rocks then, but moved a few rocks. Most of what's going on is the shop over on the other side. Yeah, we got a little shop project going on here. Looks like a nice one. If you can see that. Ooh. You can zoom in there. Awesome. Well that's sweet. We've been missing you guys. Well, we miss everybody yeah, too. For yeah. sure. Good. What we were hoping. Yeah. It's oh. hard not seeing people. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seems that way. Uh, well, thanks for showing us your spot. It's a beautiful spot. We got this nice view of uh, some brown hills, some trees, no fires. So that's pretty nice. Uh, but we love you guys, and we're sure grateful to see you. Thank you. Yep. Have a great uh, day. Thank you. Yep. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas great. That taught my heart to fear In grace my fears relieved How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed My chains are gone
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever. Okay, folks, let's come together. I got to tell you, getting to share God's word, getting to do a sermon is my absolute favorite thing to do all week long, getting ready for it. This sermon that I want to do right now is about Peter and his relationship with God and how we so much look like Peter. I have learned so much during this brain tumor and the cancer and the radiation and the chemotherapy. God has spoken to my heart and showed me so much. One of the biggest pictures has been the man, Peter. I realize that I am so much like Peter. Let me, let me show you what I mean. This is what Peter is like. God's word paints a picture of Peter. The problem is that I am too much like Peter. It's the negative things that I'm like Peter. I struggle to do the positive things in my life. But I will also show you that once in a while, I come forth in a positive way, just like Peter did. Peter, Peter had times of being a pain, of being selfish and prideful and egotistical. The same problems that I have. Now, let me show you some scriptures that paint the picture of Peter. See if they look like you too, folks. Matthew chapter 26, verse 33 through 35. Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. And Jesus replied in 34, quote, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. Verse 35 says, no way, Peter insisted. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. Now, now look at the truth of what Jesus Christ said would happen in this next set of verses I give you. Now, I'm just going to give you the highlights of these verses. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 26 what Peter would do. Okay? Here's what Peter did. Luke chapter 22, verse 56. I'm just giving you parts of it, okay? A servant girl said, quote, This man, she's talking about Peter, was with him, was with Jesus Christ. 57 says, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him. Now, Peter denies knowing Jesus three times and responds the last time in verse 60. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. Peter's failure is so very clear, isn't it? I can understand his failure in this really tough situation. It was, he was risking his life. How about Peter failing when it would have been pretty easy to succeed? See, folks, you've got to understand, I'm relating this to me. This is where I get caught. What about when he's not risking his life? He's just supposed to stay awake. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 40. Then he returned to the disciples. Jesus returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, quote, Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? So, so I see both styles of Peter's failure. 
But the love of Jesus is still there. And look at who Peter shows himself to be after all this failure. In just a few days, in just a few days, in Acts chapter 2, verse 36 through 38. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him, Jesus, both Lord and Christ, both Lord and Messiah. This Jesus whom you crucified, now when they heard this, the people that Peter's talking to heard this, and the people that needed Jesus Christ as Savior heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brother, what shall we do? Peter said to them, here's Peter's reactions. Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You will receive salvation. That's what it's saying. So Peter had some good times of walking with Jesus Christ, but that wasn't what he was always like. Now, when Peter was a problem, this is it. This is what I want you to hang on to, please. Did Jesus Christ quit on him? When Peter was a problem, did Jesus Christ choose not to love him? This, folks, this was turning the point for me. When Peter was choosing to act wrong, Jesus Christ still loved him. Jesus still came after him. That is what Jesus showed me also. When we have failure in our life, God still loves us deeply. And he treats us with kindness. He treats us with grace and mercy and love. Look at this in your own life. Look at the failures that you have had. Times that you don't act the way you should. Times that you're not choosing to seek after God, to walk with God. Times that you don't go to his word every day. Times that you are selfish and egotistical and not submitting to him. How does God treat you? How did God treat Peter when he had failure in his life? Let me give you the answer again. Now, this is just after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. How did Jesus Christ treat Peter? Now, I know that there's deepness in these verses that I'm going to give you. Uh, between the, the issue of agape and phileo, it's deep thinking. It is. I know that. But just look with me at the simplicity of love. If I love, then I will act like I love. Look at John chapter 21, verse 15 through verse 17. Now, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, quote, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Peter's answer, yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, and feed my sheep, feed my lambs, excuse me. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus says, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt. Because Jesus asked him the third time, quote, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know all these things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Now, we know that this has some complications to it. But it is truth. Do you love me? Jesus asking each of us. That is what Jesus Christ showed me during these last six plus months that I've had. I personally could lack the right level of love that I should have. And God still loves me. I could personally have failure 
and God still loves me. I am still safe in him. Now, does that, does that teach me? Does that give me permission to be selfish all the time? Does it make it okay to be selfish? Does it make it okay to not submit to God on a daily basis? To demand that I get to choose what to do and how to do it whenever I want to choose my way. You see what I've learned in these past few months? Even in Peter's failure, God's love still stayed strong, still stayed complete, just like it has stayed complete for me. So what is that supposed to do to me? If I'm like Peter, what am I supposed to do in my life? I'm supposed to act the way that Peter acted. Let me give you an example. In Acts chapter 10, this is verse 10 through 34, but let me just give you the highlights, okay? Peter has a vision from God. He's asleep. Has a vision from God. Now in this vision, he sees all kinds of meat that he's been taught not to eat. And now God tells him to eat it. And Peter's answer is, no way. And God repeats his directions again to eat it. Three times he does. And Peter says, no way. Three times. Then, then, Peter's reaction when he wakes up is, huh, what was that all about? Okay. <laughs> Peter, oh man, I'm so much like him. God's answer to Peter's reaction and to his question is, three men have come to you. Do what they ask you to do. And Peter does do what he's asked to do. Peter goes to, listen to this, a non-Jewish house, home, and leads them to Jesus Christ. And Peter understands God's call by his obedience. And verse 34 is the answer from Peter that pleases God. Look at verse 34 of Acts 10. Opening his mouth, Peter said, I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality. Now let me go down a quick rabbit trail, please. Peter has come to someone who is not a Jew, quote, God is not one to show partiality. He's come to someone who is not the same race, who's not the same culture like Peter. The racism that we have in our country today is detested by God. It is taught against again and again. We are not to be racists. We must love all people. We are covering Peter right now. Peter making a right decision. Now, so, I personally am thankful for my brain tumor and for the cancer and for all that came out of it because it helped me to see the changes that I needed to make. God used all of it to show me his love for me. That's the God that we worship and the God that we seek. That's the God who wants to be our Father, the God that is so kind. He is so gracious. He is so faithful to us. Now, the question that I have for you is, will I accept what he has for you? So will you accept what he has done for you? We must, folks, we must accept it each day of the week. Spend time each day of the week having a humble heart before God every day of the week. Not just on Sunday, but Sunday through Saturday. Listen, listen. When you come to church, do you come all submissive to the Father? Do you come wanting to submit to God? Or do you come wanting to do things the way you want to do them? 
Do you want to be in charge when you come to church? Are you selfish in who you want in charge? Or is today the day you come with a submissive heart to God? Many of us come with our heart in a good spot. Church on Sunday does that for us. But I gotta ask you, do you have the same heart attitude on Monday through Saturday? You must see that God's call and his desire is that you have a submissive heart every day of the week. Let me quote for you 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Yeah, 7, 14, excuse me. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Which one of the disciples that walked with Jesus did good one time and did selfish other times? All of them did. We saw Peter. He did some good things, but he also made some bad decisions. How about Judas Iscariot? In Matthew chapter 10, Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. In Matthew chapter 26, and Judas, who was betraying him, said, Surely it's not I, Rabbi. And later in verse 26, the traitor, Judas, had given them a prearranged signal. Quote, you will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. And Jesus said to him, quote, My friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Now, listen. Judas could have then made a right decision after making all the wrong decisions. But Judas kept doing what he wanted the way that he wanted to do it. He did not seek God. He made his own decision. That is what gets us in trouble. God's call is that we would submit to him and submit to how he operates. What is the difference in these two disciples? Peter acknowledged that he was wrong and he was broken hearted. Judas wanted his own way and wanted to do his own thing. Is your heart broken for God? Do you want Jesus Christ to be in charge? Walking with Jesus is not a Sunday event. It is a Sunday a.m. to Saturday p.m. event. We must seek after God every day. Spend time in the Word every day. What was said to Peter? Now, this is just a basic picture in Mark 16, verses 5 through 7. This is happening at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As they, now the they is Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. As they entered the temple, they saw a young man. They saw an angel, didn't they? He said, the angel said, you are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He is, has risen. Now, here it is. But go, tell his disciples. So he says, go tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Jesus comes after Peter still. Because Jesus, Peter's heart is right. Even though Peter has just failed Jesus miserably. Our heart needs to be right. Our heart needs to be full of repentance and full of submission to God's way. Choosing to be how God wants us to be. Our relationship is not only about what we do, but why we do it. What we do will be okay if, if the reason why we do it is okay. Then, is your heart submissive to God and to his ways? 
Remember 2 Chronicles 7, 14, we were told, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Will I humble myself? Will I talk and listen to God? Will I seek God with all my heart? Will I choose righteousness rather than selfishness? Am I working on these each day of the week? Let's pray together. Holy God, our only hope is you. Oh God, we fail so often. I fail so often. And yet you love me. You keep coming after me. God, I want to quit failing. I want to quit choosing wrong. I want to choose right. Oh God, thank you for your amazing love, your gift of salvation your kindness and mercy to us. Bless us, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Your benediction this morning is out of Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 through 13. This is Paul saying, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I'm away, it's even more important. Listen to this. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Verse 13, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Quote, live like you have salvation. Quote, obeying God. Quote, God is working in you. Quote, giving you what you need. Quote, to do what pleases him. God wants you. He wants me. And may God's rich blessing be on each of you as you seek him daily. I love you all. Have a great week.